This is one I have not read in a long time. And if you would all indulge me, I would love to read. Uh, from Dwarves, Book the First, Where the Sun Shines Not, The Shaft. <laughs> This is one of my early works, so uh, bear with me on. Have at thee, varlets! Hrothgar's savage war cry reverberated from the alley walls. He bounded across the intervening space and met the onrushing orcs head on. One prodigious sweep of Toothfang, his massive double-headed fairy-forged axe, hewed two of the attackers clean through the midsection and the backstroke clove a third from crown to colon. The remaining dozen swirled around him, slipping in the entrails of their comrades, but Toothfang wove a song of death among them, and heads, limbs, and viscera were scattered across the muck with every vicious swipe. Ah, oh, God, I was good back then. <clears throat> and Lalia hopped onto a nearby box and drew her bow, her ample breasts straining against her leather bodice she feathered two orcs with a single black shaft. Hrothgar thundered his... Wow, that's a good word. <laughs> Humalian battle song as he mowed down adversaries like dogs in the street. Humalian, yes. The few remaining orcs, realizing that their careful ambush had crashed upon the rocks of the giant knight's blade and assassin's bow, broke off and charged at Princess Uria, desperate to fulfill their mission. <laughs> Eric instantly interposed himself, whipping out Slackbit, the short sword. Uria clutched his jerkin in terror, her heavy breasts pressing against his back, her sweet elf breath hot in his farm boy neck. He tried to stifle his trembling, for he had never faced battle before. Three orcs bore down on him, their piggish eyes twinkling like gems of hatred in the night sky of evil. <laughs> Suddenly, a black arrow hummed past like an, like an angry harmonica and thudded into the chest of one, knocking him sprawling. Another arrow, another dead orc. But the last was now too close. With a foul-breathed, broken-toothed growl, he chopped at Eric with a rusty hatchet. Gritting his teeth, Eric picked the orc, pictured the orc, as a dire gopher and slack bit as a hoe. <laughs> he pictured the orc as a dire gopher and slack bite as a garden hoe. He met the hatchet mid-swing, beating, beating it aside even as the blow numbed his arm and drove him to his knees. Uria shrieked, the orc laughed cruelly, raising his weapon again. No, cried Eric. <clears throat> How could he even reach where the sun does not shine without the princess? Where the sun shines not without the princess. Wow. <laughs> I don't write for out loud. <laughs> the orc took a single step forward and then lurched suddenly and unnaturally to the side, transfixed through the sternum by Toothfang, hurled with the full might of Hrothgar's iron thews and crashed against the alley wall. His head and left arm slid to one side, the rest of him to the other, spraying gouts of thick green ichor. What ho, stripling, bethered Hrothgar, <laughs> idly com combing brains and gore from his bright red beard. Art thou and the fair lady Uria unharmed? Eric swallowed and staggered to his feet. Uria, her fur... Her fist held to her full lips, and her limpid, violet eyes wide, nodded at him and smiled demurely. Yes, he replied shakily, we're fine. Fists on hips, Hrothgar threw back his head and roared with laughter. By Grom, these misbegotten devil spawn provide no ill sport indeed. <laughs> Not even a fair stretching of my limbs. What say you, archer woman? Aliana paused in cutting free one of her barbed arrows from its victim. They die easily. Hrothgar whooped again. Well said, assassin wench! <laughs> Placing a huge blood-clotted boot to the remains of a nearby orc, he yanked free another arrow and squinted at it critically. Fie! This dark wood reeks of skullduggery. A weapon for night slaying. Give me the stout yellow hue from the forest of Humililia. 
Yeah, whatever. Uh, and Alia strode up to him and took the arrow, replacing it carefully in her quiver. I prefer the ebon shaft, she told him boldly, <laughs> for its greater length and strength. <laughs> Look, cried Yuria, pointing towards the far end of the alley. There, a guttering, dented oil lamp swayed in the light breeze, and beside it hung a warped and faded sign with only one word upon it. <clears throat> Potions. It's the sign that the beggar at the market told us to look for, she continued excitedly. Tis so by my troth, boomed Hrothgar, wiping Toothfang clean on a fallen orc's foe's tunic. Make haste, urged Anyalia, her lithe form padding along the alley as silently as a snake, before more of Zumrock's thugs find us. Unhesitatingly, Hrothgar strode, strode to the dingy door below the sign and hammered it with the flat of his axe, a single blow that sounded like a clap of loud noise. Proprietor, he bellowed, open for Hrothgar the stalwart. A slit opened in the door and a pair of eyes, black as the pits of a well, glared out at them. What do you want? Eric peered around Hrothgar's giant frame. Please, sir, we, um, we have an urgent need to see the Urgadane the Munificent. The eyes narrowed. There's no one here by that name. The slit slammed shut. Stand thee aside, plow lad, Hrothgar growled. He spit into his hands and took hold of Toothfang. Grom, strike me down if any portal ever wrought balks at barbarian knight of the royal order of Cosmothesis. <laughs> Wait, Yuria pushed her nubile form to the fore and cupped her slender white hands around her luscious red lips. Please, she called into the potion shop. I am Princess Yuria of Elfenheim. My grandfather was Porhu the Wise. He knew Ergadane at the College of Aliathomancy. <laughs> I said that. A pregnant pause ensued, gravid with expectancy. Gravid with expectancy. Hrothgar glowered. A rattling at the door heralded its unlocking, and presently the portal swung inward. They, the party entered to find themselves in a cramped shop where bottles of all sizes, shapes, and colors festooned the shelves from floor to ceiling, glittering like stars in a crown. A man stood there. Tall, he was. Nearly as tall as Hrothgar, with wide shoulders, powerful arms, a jagged scar across his neck, and a dragon tattoo on his back. A black cloak swathed him from head to foot, revealing only his untrusting eyes. <laughs> X-ray vision, perfect. <laughs> follow me, he commanded in a rasping voice. Follow me, he commanded in a rasping voice. And woe betide any who bears ill will against my master. Rothgar <laughs> snorted. Woe betide any who betides woe on well-meaning adventurers, he retorted. <laughs> Down a narrow hallway they walked. Eric tested his injured knee and found it strong, which relieved him for it had, it had been hanging over his head ever since his flight from Idledale over a moon, month agone. Wow, over a month agone. <laughs> the hall debouched into a cozy sitting room with deep rugs and well-turned tables. A fire blazed in the hearth, and in an overstuffed chair sat a wizened old man sucking on a long, thin pipe. His trailing white beard draped across the breast of a robe festooned with yellow moons, orange stars, <laughs> blue diamonds, and purple horseshoes. <laughs> but no green clovers. His kindly, elderly eyes lit on Yuria. That would be copyright infringement. Ah, he said, you have your... <clears throat> ah, he said. You have your grandfather in you. I can see that. What does Pyrrho's progeny want of an old thermitage such as myself? If you please, Master Ergadane, said Uria, pulling Eric's arm, this young man has proof that the dark dwarves are rising. The tall man in the cloak laughed derisively. <laughs> but Ergadane plucked the pipe from his mouth dramatically. He leaned forward. 
the leaping orange flames casting his face in high relief. What is this? He whispered expressively, his eyes fixed on Eric. <laughs> yes, sir, stammered Eric, producing the dwarf knob from his breeches. <laughs> <laughs> It glowed redly in his fist. I found this while tilling our turnip field. Then it's true, muttered the old sorcerer. The red dwarf knob has come to light. The prophecy is coming true. What mean you, potion peddler, demanded Hrothgar. Where the sun shines not truly is a fable spun by... Ma undering fishwives in the marketplace. This hobbly hooks rock is a gnome's jape, I wager. <laughs> Let's start that again. <laughs> where the sun <laughs> Where the sun shines not truly is a fable spun by This has gotta be a typo. I would not write a word called Moundering. <laughs> yes, I would. Moundering makes total sense. Not, not, tru not truly is a fable spun by maundering fishwives in a marketplace. This hobbledy hoys rock is a gnome's jape, I wager. That sounds so much better. Thank you. <clears throat> I told you it's been a while since I wrote this. Ergadane leaped forward, the crackling red flame shrouding his face in deep shadow. <laughs> Not only, here yeah, that's the voice, not only my massively proportioned friend, not so my massively proportioned friend. Tis a place real enough, I'm sorry to say. Under the devil bone mountains they dwell, deep in the earth where the godly kiss of daylight has never shone. A place of unutterable foulness and evil. And if the dark dwarves issue forth from where the sun shines not, that foulness will spread far and wide. All of Bilirka will be in peril. <laughs> Analia slithered towards him like a jungle cat. If the dark dwarves do exist, old man, then what of the other legends? The hordes of gold and gems they supposedly protect. They are true enough. The spoils of lands conquered when the world was young and swathed in eternal darkness. Verily, the treasures lurking there cannot be overestimated. Rothgar barked gleefully. No man, woman born, pursues booty with more fervor than I. Point me towards this sunshineless kingdom, ancient one, and then stand ye well beyond the sweep of Toothfang. Address the master with respect, barbarian, demanded the man in the cloak, whose name was Fenric, lest I thrash the insolence from you. Rothgar gripped his haft, his axe haft menacingly. Thou hast but try, sirrah! Enough, Eric snapped. The large men, startled by his brashness, stilled themselves. Sir, continued Eric to the mage, how can the dwarves be stopped? Does, does the prophecy say? I, I feel the dwarf knob pulling me there, and, and yet I, I, I know not what to do. Ergadane leaned forward the dancing yellow flames bathing his face in warm light. The dwarven knob, the heart of a champion, and blood of the royal house of Elfenheim must combine to quell the rising. That is all that is known. Eric looked at his hand. I have the dwarven knob, the, the princesses of royal blood, and surely Hrothgar has the heart of a champion. The humanillion preened Fairly flattered I be, and yet you are aright. Fret not, callow youth. I shall lead you to where son of a bitch, that was the wrong character. Fairly flattered I be, and yet you are aright. Fret not, callow youth. I shall lead you to where the sun shines not, and me it's booty. <laughs> and I, added Uria sweetly, gently squeezing his shoulder. Fenric scoffed at Eric. You think thou art up for the task? Pshaw! Where the sun shines not is not a place for boys, but for men. Only those who have girded their loins and faced true horror can brave it. 
Eric gulped, for he knew that Fenwick was right. Thank God that one's over. Right. All right, I think we're gonna take a 10 minute break. Oh, please. <laughs> so uh, feel free to get up, grab some snacks, buy a book, uh, and we will be back.